Let us start our project by creating the input file folder. I will give it name store underscore files. Daily our input file is going to land in this directory. So let me paste my first input file. Yep, done. Now before we write the actual DAG, first we need to set up the working environment with certain set of services and dependencies that our project needs. For that, I will be leveraging the same Docker Airflow master project and will make the changes in its compose file according to our project needs. So starting with, guys as of now we just have Postgres and Airflow image installed in our Docker. But now for this project I would add MySQL service into it and also configure SMTP for emailing. For embedding MySQL, after this Postgres, I will write MySQL and its relevant parameters. So first parameter we have image with its version. Guys for any image, name or its version, you can always cross check it at hub.docker.com. There you can find from hundreds of images. Then the credentials are set in environment variables. Setting the user variable is optional. You may or may not set it. At this stage, I want to keep my application very simple and will not create any specific user for this app. By not creating the user explicitly, we'll make the MySQL to create a root user by its own default mechanism. But yeah, password is a mandatory variable. So I have set it to root. Then is this volumes. Now guys, look, we are storing our input file locally on drive in store underscore files folder. And in order to do transformations, MySQL container has to read the file from that location, right? Now to make that location and file accessible to MySQL container, we have to mount the store underscore files directory on MySQL container. Remember the same thing we did with DAX folder in tutorial example. So in volumes, write the physical directory to be mounted and then the mounted path. Now whenever we run this compose file and MySQL container is launched, it will create this directory on the fly and will share the volumes between host. File path is set, but guys there is still one small problem. Actually MySQL servers by default are launched with a secure file, which limits to load any data from external files into its tables due to security reasons. So if we start running this app as it is, MySQL won't allow us to write data from a CSV file into its table. So either we have to move the CSV file into the directory specified by secure file, or we can explicitly disable that option before MySQL startup. I have chosen the second option to disable it by overwriting the default secure file. This overwriting is done by a configuration file. I already have a configuration file. See here I have passed an empty string to secure file directive, which will simply disable it. Hence allowing us to load data from external files into MySQL tables. Let's quickly move this file into our project folder. And again, to make this local file accessible inside a MySQL container, we need to mount it. Yeah, great. So with this configuration set, MySQL setup is ready. Then we have the Airflow web server service. Here also we need to make some changes to meet our project needs. What changes? Let's check. The first is, as from now on along with Postgres, Airflow will be depending on MySQL container too. So put its entry here. Now coming inside the environment, since we are adding MySQL database, so in order to make Airflow support and connect with MySQL, we need to add MySQL in it. Type install underscore MySQL. This line behind the scenes will import all the relevant components of MySQL that we are going to use in our DAG file. This being done, now as per our requirements of sending email alerts after successful DAG run, we need to set up the SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. If any of you don't know, an SMTP is a set of communication guidelines that allow software to transmit an email over internet. By default, Airflow does not bundle in SMTP service, so we need to voluntarily set it up. In this examples, I will be using Gmail servers to send emails, but you can choose from a number of other options available in the market. For Gmail, make sure you have a working Gmail account. I am going to paste the directives for setting SMTP Gmail servers. 
going through them at first line we are telling airflow that which smtp host we are going to use for gmail it's smtp.gmail.com then is a sender email id from which we will be sending emails next to authenticate the above mentioned email id we need to pass here a 16 digit password associated with that email and specific for this airflow application guys this is not your general gmail login password this is a different password that gmail provides you for smtp connections and if you don't know how to generate gmail specific passwords don't worry i have added a lecture in the bonus section which will guide you how to generate app specific smtp passwords in gmail then we have smtp port which is 587 for gmail and at last we are defining the from name this specifies under which name the mail is being sent so with this set of smtp configurations airflow will now be able to automatically send alert emails to the receiver address which we will set in the dag file ahead one last step same like we mounted store files directory on mysql container we need to mount the same directory with airflow container too now you may be thinking that we already have mounted store files in mysql then why do we need to add volumes for it in airflow container this is because mysql and airflow will run on two different containers so in order to make that directory accessible to both containers we need to mount them explicitly on each of the containers so i will paste the mount also please note that i have also mounted an additional sql files folder where i am going to keep my sql scripts in fact let me create that folder now only Mm, with this i guess we have added every prerequisite of our application and we are all set to launch the new tailor made airflow environment for our project guys to save my time i could have easily skipped this configurations explanation and just provide you this compose file for the project but i want you to be fully independent and have full control over this project like an admin i don't like idea of cramming the things having knowledge of compose file will allow you to make tweaks even in the roots of this project and i hope you will appreciate these efforts anyways let us launch this compose file run the compose it is pulling mysql image i'll skip this video till its completion it is done let's quickly check the containers list yeah we got one more member in our family mysql container kudos we have completed the first milestone of our application let's now write the dag file for it in the next lecture